faculty, and welcome to Exchange, the TLX podcast for faculty by faculty. I'm Nikki Monahan, TLX faculty facilitator and coach, and I'm here this morning with Mike Avis, also faculty facilitator in the TLX. We're practicing good social isolation protocols, so we're coming to you from home, which means that you may hear Morley, my wonder dog, uh, bark if somebody comes by the door. Where are you, Mike? Well, I'm in my COVID-19 bunker in the basement. Um, <laughs> you might hear barking, running, screaming, and crying. My three kids are upstairs running around, so we'll see how this goes. Well, thanks for agreeing to do this today, Mike. I know uh, I know, continuing to work full-time when you're also taking care of three kids is, is something that lots of folks are dealing with. So we're going to go on with our exchange. So how you been, Nikki? What's what's been happening? Well, it's been a busy week for everyone, but uh, for me, it's so inspiring to see folks working hard to support one another, uh, share resources, and basically get ready as best we can to meet with students again next week. Yeah, it's been uh, you know what it's been a really interesting time for for I think all of us at the TLX and me too, just to see all the energy and all the. Um, fellowship that's happening and people helping each other. I think it's really been phenomenal to see this the group of faculty come together and really work hard to make this happen. Absolutely. And, you know, and really that's what uh, we're here for. And I know some people have been connecting with students in a variety of ways online for a long time. And so maybe it feels like uh, business as usual next week. But for other folks, I know this has been anxiety-provoking and a bit of a learning curve, and we're really hoping that uh, folks have received the supports they've needed to get up to speed. And, and that's really our job, to help one another and, and build this TLX community where there's a lot of uh, mutual support going on. Yeah, and I've heard, a, I've heard a lot of questions sort of recently in our discussions about just my discussion with faculty is, what do we do when we're actually face to face, and I'm using air quotes here, you can't see it, but face to face or screen to screen with our students. So for those people who don't have a lot of experience online or distance teaching, teaching from off campus, what are you, how is it going to be different from a normal class? And how do we have to change the way that we do things and the way that we think um, to engage with our students when we're not physically near them? So I think maybe today we could just talk about a little, we could talk a little bit about what are our strategies? What are some ideas to engage your students when you're not actually physically in the same room? I think that's a great topic for today, Mike. And, you know, I'm always thinking that, you know, we have incredible teaching faculty. And right now, it's just a matter of taking what's the, the what are the best things that you do with learners face to face and in some ways uh, replicate them uh, when we're doing remote learning. So, Mike, what do you think are the most important things for faculty to keep in mind when teaching remotely? Um, I think the most important is, especially when it's your first session or your first time where your students and you together are working remotely, is to welcome your students into your, and I'm using air quotes again, room. Um, I hope most of you are using Blackboard Collaborate. Um, some of you might be doing classes, synchronous classes, so that you're actually doing them live. Some people might just have a Blackboard Collaborate room open for group discussion or for office hours, again, in air quotes. Uh, so I think that really the first thing is to make sure that your students are welcome. Give them a chance to understand their environment. One of the things that I suggest to faculty is if they're using Blackboard, instead of, so for some of you who have been doing the Blackboard workshops, Instead of having just a blank screen and people sitting there waiting and wondering, who's, are you there? Is anybody there? To put a slide or some kind of welcome message on your Blackboard session so that when someone comes in, they see a message from you, the professor. Uh, maybe you put a thought-provoking question or you put something for them to think about, but something to engage them when they're actually waiting for everyone else to appear. I think it's a really good way to start. That's a great idea, Mike. I think about my days in the classroom with students and you know, it's a 10 o'clock start, but you've got 50 students. You can only see, you know, 20 of them in front of you. I had a tendency to stand at the door and say good morning or good afternoon and welcome students, try and use as many names as I could when they came in. The same thing does happen in the uh, the Collaborate Live session. You know, maybe you're supposed to start at 2, and there's only a couple people there. So say hello, let people know, hey, we're 
we're waiting for others to to join us uh, and 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 make sure that people uh, are not just feeling that uh, dead air time in a live session because that can feel a little bit uncomfortable and increase uh, student anxiety. Sure, and I, w- I would also say that it's okay as the professor to admit that this is a new experience for you to say we're here to support. I'm here to support you as students, but I'm also hoping that you can help support me as a professor and we can, you know, get the best learning experience possible in this situation. Um, I think that puts your students at ease to, for you to admit that, you know, this is a new situation and we're both, everybody's learning. I think that's also really exciting that, that you're putting yourself at that level. So I would really steer against sort of waiting and being, being as rigid as perhaps you would be in your face-to-face classes and say, um, you know, give some flexibility, give people time, a chance to uh, uh, acclimatize themselves to their environment. For sure. And and we do know that these are anxiety-provoking times. Um, you know, if we talk to our counseling faculty, they say, you know, student anxiety is a real issue. And, and uh, we know that when people are anxious, it makes it harder to learn. Um, lots of students are familiar with the Blackboard environment and know how to go in and access content online and do readings, etc. But again, if you're using uh, Collaborate Ultra for the first time, um, maybe you can send out some information to students ahead of time to, to go in and, and, and find their way around. But if it's the first time you're meeting live with a group, even just a basic orientation. So, you know, check out those icons at the bottom. You know, you might want to turn your uh, video off if you don't want everybody to see you in your pajamas or turn the microphone off until uh, you need to speak. And that little icon with a person with the hand up, uh, that's how you uh, put your hand up in a live session. Um, some students, just like in a classroom, will never feel comfortable uh, asking uh, a question out loud. And so it's great for them to know that there's a chat box there that they can key in their question. And uh, so just even a basic orientation around the environment, I think, will will do a lot to help uh, reduce some of that student anxiety. Right. Any and, other key tips, Mike? Um, yeah, I would say be prepared for chaos. And some mm-hmm. faculty are more or less Comfort or more comfortable or less comfortable with that chaos, but that's going to come so with the true. package, right? There yeah. are going to be students who can't get their microphone to work, and they're going to be frantic, yeah. and there are going to be other students who are going to hog the airtime, and there's going to be a whole bunch of things that are new. So yeah. patience, um, just waiting to let things work out. Um, I would say a few sort of technical tips would be the mute button is your friend. Mm-hmm. Um I've been in quite a few meetings on Teams and on Collaborate, and use of the mute button is a, is a really good tool. So it's I would say you can mute all and then release people to speak when they want to. Maybe use the raising your hand function, I think, is, as you mentioned, is really important. And then you can unmute them and let them talk. Um, but also maybe, and again, these are just suggestions, maybe just a free-for-all. Maybe the second class you say, okay, I'm just going to open it up and have everyone talk. And maybe nothing happens or maybe something does. But again, don't try to control everything, but try to control the little things that will make it, make it easier for you as a professor. Yeah, that's really great advice, Mike. And, and, and there will be technical problems. So n- not expecting a perfection of ourselves uh, or other students. And, um, uh, and I think that's really important. And I don't know if people heard beeping, but I had a call come in a minute ago, and you may have heard some beeping. So um, this is an opportunity for us to role model with our students. You know what happens when we make mistakes, and, and it's okay to make mistakes, and, uh, and nobody is expecting uh, perfection at this time. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the other things that I, I think, um, you know, this um, this virus is having implications in terms of our uh, education, but everybody is really aware it's having huge implications in terms of economics. And one of the things that I want people to keep in mind is, is that um, many of our, our learners really are living through precarious uh, economic times. So in addition to the anxiety of learning a new way of learning, some of them are also juggling having kids at home. Maybe they've lost their part-time jobs. They're dealing with financial uh, stresses. 
worrying about how to pay the rent or feed their, themselves and their mm-hmm. loved ones. Mm-hmm. So I, I think um, we can never err on the side of being too kind or too compassionate with our learners. Yeah, ab- absolutely. And, and really, the for those students who have children, and I can sympathize with all of them, <laughs> you know, maybe a three-hour or two-and-a-half-hour Blackboard Collaborate Ultra class live is not the best solution. Mm-hmm. Maybe shorten, keeping it shorter than maybe you, pro- you probably would. Maybe um, uploading some content for them to be able to do it on their own rather than mm-hmm. creating sort of the similar synchronous class that you would do, a well, synchronous class that you were thinking of doing online. I think that's a really important thing is to be really aware of what the students are going through and yeah. to limit some of the, your online time. Because again, and I've heard this from other faculty is, we're all really concerned about what we're doing, but remember, this same process is happening with every single one of their classes. So mm-hmm. are they going to be really happy to be sitting in front of a computer for 15, 16, 17 hours while their professors continue to do these sort of long um, Blackboard Collaborate Ultra sessions? So again, be aware, some of this learning can happen on their own. You can upload video, you can upload um, PowerPoints, you can upload content articles that they can actually do on their own. And just one more thing, Nikki, I want to make this real, I want to make this uh, shout out. The Blackboard team at ELTI and the instructional designers and developers have been doing a wonderful job in helping everyone get online on Blackboard. So if you haven't done any of those sessions, those are running three times a week. They'll continue to run next week while you're in classes. So they have been a momentous support to all the faculty going forward. Yeah, thanks for that shout out, Mike. I mean, really important. Um, th- those folks have been working around the clock, and I know again, not everything is perfect, but uh, it- it's really important to f- for faculty to know that there are all kinds of uh, resources and supports available there. So, so thanks for making that shout out. Um, but I also like the reminder that you made that you know, while each of us as faculty members may be dealing with uh, however many courses we are preparing, you know, our students uh, might be juggling, um, you know, four or five courses at the same time. So that so that's a lot to manage. Yeah, of course. And I can hear the pinging going off in the background. You're getting, like me, getting lots of messages from faculty, <laughs> which is great. That's for sure. That's, that's great. for sure. Yeah. So maybe we should uh, come to the end of uh, our podcast exchange and, and uh, go respond to some of those faculty requests. Um, any final words before I close out our session, Mike? Um, I guess my final words would be keep going, keep at it. Um, use your resources available to you, which for me is the faculty that you work with. There are lots of champions out there. There are lots of people who have a lot of expertise. um, And I really see that happening already. So keep that up. And my other message would be keep it simple as well. Don't try to do anything that you haven't done before. Um, Keep it to a few basic things. Get through the first week or two. Because remember, this could go, we don't know how long this is going to happen. So Mm -hmm. if you feel like you want to add something, then yes, you can start adding something as you move down this process week by week. Um, I hope it's not too many weeks, but keep it simple. Talk to your, talk to your fellow faculty and uh, keep learning. Fantastic advice, Mike. Thanks so much. So on Monday morning when classes re- resume, we really hope you put student learning first. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your families. Uh, don't forget to wash your hands. And stay tuned for the next episode of Exchange. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mike. All right. Bye, Nikki. Have a, have a good day. You too.